All right, so this is a suggestion via Discord that in the video is uh, NASA officially touches the sun. Guys, when this happened, I was absolutely frightened. I'm going to be honest here. Like when I heard that NASA was actually going to be doing this, I just didn't understand why uh, we would want to do this. Um, being that we've never actually done something like this, at least to my knowledge, um, the last thing we need to do is, uh, let's say, upset the sun by actually touching it. Uh, but their, I think their definition of touching it is more like touching the upper atmosphere, potentially. Right. Uh, but I, but I thought they were literally going to be like physically like landing, like attempting to throw something at it into the actual, you know, star itself, uh, because the last thing I want is a gigantic solar flare to um, <laughs> to spawn, let's say, and wipe out the entirety of Earth. I don't, we don't need that, guys. On Christmas, that's savage. But either way, let's see how this actually went, guys. Well, NASA officially touching the sun this morning with its Park Solar Probe flying a little under 4 million miles of the sun's surface. What could this tell us? Let's bring in Leroy Chow, former NASA astronaut and International Space Station commander. Uh, Le Leroy, thank you so much for joining us today. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, this is very exciting. This happened this morning, uh, and this is being called historic. It's like 50 uh, yeah. years in the making. Tell us a little more about it. Sure, great to be on. Merry Christmas to everyone there. Uh, yes, this is a, a first on many levels. It approached the sun at a record speed of around 430 million miles per hour, 430,000 uh, miles per hour, which is the fastest uh, probe that is ever uh, we've ever launched. It also came, as you said, within 3.8 million miles of the sun's surface. That sounds like a big distance, but if you no, take the not. distance from the Earth to the sun and compare that to a football field, uh, you'd be uh, about on the four yard line, right? So it's pretty close. So this is historic because we are studying the sun during what's called solar maximum. The sun goes through a cycle of about 11 years. Solar minimum happened about 11 years ago. This probe was launched in 2018. And so it's been able to study the transition from min to max. And it's uh, we're hoping, the scientists are hoping that it'll actually experience a solar flare uh, during its approach and we can learn a whole lot it. more about how dynamic how the dynamics of the sun work. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned those uh, very hot temperatures, but I just want to... I guess my only question is, bro, I hope you had, like, some type of camera attached to this thing. Um, like, I understand having, like, the, uh, the, the animated versions of what's actually happening, but I do seriously hope that there is some type of camera. I'm not sure how they're going to be able to maintain it, uh, but to my knowledge, on the inside of the probe itself, it's, like, room temperature, even if it's that close to the sun. Uh, the heat shield is basically shielding the internals, so I do hope again that there is some type of device that has the ability to um, you know, get some type of footage because that would be amazing if we actually got close up uh, onto the sun um, I wonder what type of like neutral density filter would have been used to even catch any video I don't know guys but that sounds intriguing to me put the numbers up on the screen so our audience can see uh, so the flyby again occurred at 6:53 a.m. Uh, 430 thousand miles per hour and the craft faced temperatures between 1700 and 1800 degrees fahrenheit uh flying 3.8 million miles uh within the sun's surface but you say that is less than a football field's length so that is pretty <laughs> darn close in comparison and and leroy just tell us what are some of the things that uh, we are hoping to learn from this i understand uh, we're learning about uh, coronal heating solar wind what else can we learn and why is it important what can we take away from all of this well sure and, and as everyone knows the sun is a very dynamic system the sunspots are an indicator or seem to be a pretty good indicator of when there were going to be solar flares and coronal mass ejections mm -hmm. and uh, so this is a chance to study those phenomena up close and you know further develop our understanding of what we call space weather. Space weather is the interaction of the sun and particles, charged particles with our magnetosphere and the earth. And so it's uh, this is gonna help us really understand better uh, about those kinds of things that are important for space travel, for our satellites out there. A big solar flare, coronal mass ejection can definitely negatively affect uh, satellites, power systems here on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so we'll hopefully, the practical side of this, hopefully we'll be able to better predict when some of these things are gonna happen. Wow. Okay, so a lot to learn there. Uh, Leroy Chow, former NASA okay. astronaut, thank you so much for your time today. Merry Christmas to you.
click. All right, so let's not get it. Um, like in terms of the science itself, yeah, it's definitely cool to learn more information and things like that. But I'm still against it. Um, I don't think we should mess. We should be messing with our son. I'm just going to be completely honest here. I'm just not sure we should be doing those things. Um, but if they do have the ability to help these gigantic corporations in some manner, sure, why not use our you know federally funded money to help them out? But either way, listen, please understand sarcasm. Don't come at me in the comments, guys. Brian, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day. You know. Thoroughly. This is my my lightsaber. Hey guys, you guys subscribe to the other channels, Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd, along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Oh, also, Mr. L. Boyd Discusses. Guys, check it out. And if you haven't heard it today, you're amazing. Mm -hmm.